From the creative minds of Thornraver and Master of Wills comes an all new card game called Resequence. This is a one to eight player cooperative and competitive mini card game that is based around area control and grid management. In the game, you're going to be getting a faction deck of 11 cards that have a total value of 69. And you're going to be drawing cards from this deck to create a grid using not only your cards, but your opponent's cards and defector cards from previous games like Master of Wills. In the game, each card has a certain value and they're going to be placed uh, providing bonuses, uh, either positive or negative, to the surrounding cards, up, down, left, or right. And the grid is going to be filled based on the number of players. And when the grid is filled, the game will end. And you will trigger points based on the positive bonuses and your card bonuses. And if you have the most points at the end of the game, you're going to be the winner. Let's talk about how to set the game up how to play, and of course, my review. Setting up the game, Resequence, Master the Grid is actually quite simple. There are two types of cards, the Defector cards and the Faction cards. Give each player a Faction deck, that's the 11 cards here with a value of 69, and then shuffle the Defector deck. This deck has the blue background. Once you've shuffled the deck and given each player a faction deck, make sure that they shuffle their faction deck, then take one Defector card and put it face up in the middle of the field. Based on the number of players playing the game will determine the grid size. I have a four player game out, so this is going to be a seven by seven grid. Then, after each player has done that, you're going to determine who goes first. To do that, you're going to simply draw from the top of this deck for each player a card. And that card's value will determine whoever is highest will get to go first. Place those cards into the discard pile. And if you're playing with less than four players, make sure that at least four cards are placed into the discard pile, even if you have to use the top of the deck. To begin, have each player draw three faction cards, three cards from their faction deck. And after that, set aside any extra factions you're not using in the game, and of course the rulebook in the box, and you're ready to go. To begin the game, the player with the highest card from the defector deck is going to go first, which will be me. I drew the seven, I start. I'll draw a card from the deck, and I can play any one of these cards face up to the grid. I can play the card adjacent, up, down, left, or right, or diagonal to any card that's placed, but I may not place a card that is not adjacent to a card. If I place adjacent up, down, left, or right, then I'm going to get to use an action and draw ability if present on the card. If I play diagonally, I will not get to do the draw, I will not get to do the action. When placing down the card, I have to check to see if there's a match. And if there's a match, I'll get the matching action on the card. In the rule book, it specifies all the different cards and all their actions, and whether or not you take the action that is matched or not matched. For instance, I have this seven and this four here. The uh, four that I placed has a negative three on the same color that is green, and thusly, I'll get to take the matching ability of the card that I played. This is a hawker, so I will get to take the hawker ability. I can also do the draw action. The draw action is pretty simple. Based on the number of draw action symbols on the card, I'll draw from this deck here. Then I will place that card, or one of those cards, onto the field. From there, I'll check to see if there is a match. Now, there are different things that can happen in the game when placing these cards down. If it's a common card and it has a draw action, you don't draw from the defector deck. If it's an epic card, then if you match, you do draw. And if it's a legendary card, if you match, you can either draw or take the action again on that card. And that, this way you can chain additional actions in the game. Additionally, if it's a non-matching card and I play, there's just a non-matching ability that functions with it. No matter what though, whenever you play a card from your hand, you're always going to do the draw and the action. It's only based on the deck whether you get to do draw, nothing, or a draw or an action card. After I've played my card and triggered any events, then I'm going to pass. And it'll go to the next player's turn. They'll draw a card from their deck, then they will play a card, check to see if it triggers a action and of course a draw, and then if so, pull from these cards here and space them out onto the grid. Additionally too, which is interesting, is if you have multiple defector draw actions, like let's say you have three of them on one singular card, you will draw three cards, place one of them on the field, and put the other two into your hand. That being said, if you're playing the cooperative game, there's a little bit of a difference here. When playing cards from the defector deck, you are basically, they're basically the bad guys. And so the commons do nothing and the uh, epics will always draw if matched and the legendaries will always draw no matter what, but you do not get to take actions from those cards only when you play from your hand. Because in that game, you're working towards uh, cooperatively to like, Get, get the right amount of points. And so these guys here are kind of meant to uh, not facilitate you in that way. But in the competitive version, it kind of helps you play cards down onto the field. 
And that's the game mode. You just simply play a card down, take the action, take the draw, see if it triggers, and then pass when you're out of actions that you can utilize. And then the grid is filled, you'll check to see how many points do you have. Well, I am the dark red character, or faction, in which case I'll check to see my numbers and adjacent points by the surrounding cards. So I go, oh, okay, this card here uh, doesn't have any negatives or positives for my two numbers. So I have a four and a nine, which means I have 13 points. However, at some point during the game, if a card gets flipped over that has like a negative two uh, that's attached to my two cards, now my nine becomes a seven and my four becomes a two. And I add those two up and I have nine points now. And you check the whole grid. It looks like a lot of math, but it's actually not. It's just based on your specific faction. And as long as each player is able to check their own factions, it's pretty simple and straightforward. And that's the idea of the game. In my review, I'll talk about some of the different actions that you can take, whether it be matching or non-matching, the different ways of playing competitively and cooperatively, and of course, what I think about the game. So Resequence is a grid management card game. It's a little bit of tug of war and king of the hill. You're basically trying to place your faction cards onto the table, scoring points, trying to manipulate your points to give you more and your opponent's points to give them less, utilizing the cards that you have and the actions available to you. Well, speaking of actions, we didn't talk about them in the how to play, so I'll cover, cover a few of them here. Netrunner, for instance, will let you move one card on the field from one position to another. That's only if you match. So you have to match your card with an adjacent card as long as you have that adjacent card symbol on your card on the one of the little corners, right? The minus one, minus two. Uh, but if you don't match, you have to move one of your own cards. It's not any card, so it's a little bit weaker of an ability. The cleaner, the cleaner is basically like a card that lets you destroy or kill any card on the field. However, if you don't match, you can only kill your own cards. Uh, there's also the fixer, lets you draw a card from the faction deck and place it face down, at which case you can then utilize it with another fixer at a later date to flip it over. So it's either place a card face down or play a card that's already face down and flip it over and use it. Uh, there's the ripper dock, lets you choose a card from the afterlife and bring it back onto the field, thusly resurrecting a fallen comrade, hopefully. And there are more actions. In fact, there's also last play actions. Basically, when the grid gets filled, like if we're playing a four player game and it has a seven by seven grid, and you have the last card to play on the grid, you'll get a special action that only that last play card can trigger. And that can also trigger ways for more last plays to happen because maybe you have a cleaner that removes cards from the field. Um, and so there's a lot of options and choices in the game. This is a grid management game. It's all based around making sure that you select the certain spots that will secure your victory. Utilizing your specific types of actions, where sometimes the card might not be the best choice as far as points, but the action's important, or the action's not very good, but the card provides you with a bonus five on all the cards of your type that are surrounding it. And so you'll have to make these deep, hard choices in the game that will make a big difference. You have also the cooperative game too. The cooperative game is pretty interesting. It's a game in which you set the difficulty and challenge yourself. There's a bit of luck involved as to not only what comes up from the defector deck, but how you choose to set up the game board based on the map. And you can kind of give yourself this uh, value of how you want to kind of set the game up. Start off a little simple, understand the basic concepts of how you should play, and then move on to the more strategic choices in the cooperative mode. Both game modes, while are the same game, feel very different and function differently as well. Cooperative game mode is all about you and your ally attempting to kind of secure the grid to formulate as many points as possible, whereas the competitive version of the game is manipulating the grid so that not only do you score the most points you possibly can, but making sure the player who's just above you or might be coming from the bottom to you, secure them and place them face down, drop them down to the bottom of the barrels. And so that's what this game is about. It's very simple in concept and nature. It has all the same feelings and style of Master of Wheels in which you're kind of having this uh, battle for supremacy in these factions, but it presents it in a new and interesting light. It's just cards, utilizing them onto a grid, utilizing actions and draws, and it makes the game for a unique experience where sitting next to Master Wheels feels like a different game, but also something that's still a little reminiscent to those previously played games. Uh, I, I really like the artwork of this game. This game has the same and similar artwork to the previous Master of Wills game. Obviously the art is now different, and not only that, but because you have the, these defectors, all of these defectors are from previous Master of Wills factions. So whereas one might be from Stormcrest, now they've switched over to Waterborne. And so each of these cards has its own like kind of, oh, they're switching sides. And there's kind of this new, uh, uh, this new allegiance that they are now having. And that's kind of what the defector deck is all about, making it kind of interesting seeing these characters that you may be new in 
and loved from previous factions that have now switched sides and now are part of the enemy team. Or the good guys team, depending on how you look at things. I, I really like everything I'm involved about this game. It's a great grid style management game and it has a lot to offer with a lot of choice while being very simple and um, not overly complicated. A few things. One thing is that when playing cards from your hand, you have to remember that whenever you play a card from your hand, you will always do the draw action, the defector draw, and you will also do the action of the card, whether it be non-matching or matching or the last card. When you draw from the deck, depending on if you're playing cooperative or competitive, in competitive, the common cards, whether they have a draw or not, don't do anything. They just go on the board. Whereas the epic cards, when you place them down, if they match, they do draw. So they can trigger a chain and you can kind of choose. Whereas legendaries will let you take the action or the draw. So in competitive, you're always going to get a bonus when you place them down, as long as they're not a common, on any of the matching areas. And in cooperative mode, it changes the game. Now, cards that are drawn to the field are not good because you want to have as much control as possible utilizing your cards and deciding what cards go onto the field. Whereas this deck wants to kind of fill the game board up as quickly as possible and give you as little chance to succeed as possible as well. Um, when playing the game, uh, I would like a card, and I think they're going to do this, there's a few things. They're going to be changing some of the stylization of the artwork to make it a little easier to see the differences between the cards and the numbers and all that, which I think is a great idea. And also having a card, it's like a little reference card to not only what faction you're playing, what color faction you're playing, but also uh, the different types of abilities, whether it be non-matching or matching or last play, maybe symbols in the game, kind of be something helpful to have just as a little reference here. Other than that though, the gameplay is great. It's straightforward, it's fun, it has unique and twi like little twists and turns. For a super small box game, there's a lot to offer here, and I really, really enjoy it. Love the style of art, love how complex and simple in nature the game is when placing cards down, and the variety of choices that you can make in a grid style game. This reminds me of games like the George Killing, the, the Dave Killingworth style games like Robotech Force of Arms um, and uh, Battle Goats, but it has its own unique feel and flair to it. If you like the Master of Wills and Thorn Raver games, then Resequence is definitely one I would suggest picking up. It's separate from those games, but has a lot of the same heart that those games have in it as well. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Resurgence Master the Grid. If you're interested in picking up the games, there's a link down below in the description where you can check it out. It's going to be on Kickstarter and you can crowdfund this game. I, I, if you love these grid based games, you're going to really enjoy this one. It has got so much complexity to how you make choices and how you manipulate the grid. You can also check out the website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget there's a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we're playing games just like this one here. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to mastering the grid with you next time.